Hello again. It is Wing Nation presented by Sage Fruit. Talking sprint car racing, our favorite time of the week, and we are so glad that you have joined us. Steve Post in our Concord, North Carolina studios. Joining us from our Mifflintown Lethal Chassis studios, Mifflintown, Pennsylvania, of course, Ashley Strummy. Hello, Ashley. How are you? We are fabulous here, Steve. I got to go to the Speed Palace and catch the few ending laps because we had an Easter egg hunt, of course, for the for our little ones. So we had to dodge that. But got to see some good racing and great weather at the Speed Palace this weekend. Great weather. Pennsylvania, I think we're getting there. April is going to be a good month, that's for sure. April is going to be a good month for sure. We'll talk a little bit about that win at the Speed Palace, because that was a good one. That was a good race. But you also want to talk about the world of Outlaw NOS Energy Drink Sprint Cars. Ashley, you and I had a pretty good chuckle last week about Brad Sweet. Where's he been? Well, he's been in a victory lane. He picked up a second straight. Uh, this one was at Devil's Bowl at the Texas Outlaw Nationals on Friday night. Yeah, Brad hasn't gone anywhere, and he proved that with his wing stand again this weekend. Back-to-back -back winners. And then... Saturday, Steve, uh, the Australian, James McFadden, picked up a big payday, uh, $20,000 richer, and his second win in that Roth 83 car. Yes, yeah, second win. He went there, and he did a shoey. Ashley, where he dumped a beer in his racing shoe and drank it. You ever done a shoey? I haven't, and I don't think, I mean, maybe 20000 I'd consider it, but yeah. I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, you should have done that. See, that should have been your move back in your pageant life. That should have been your move. Uh, there we go. See that? Your pageant life. That would have been, uh, that would have set the pageant world upside down. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> Such an exciting time in sprint car racing. The High Limit Sprint Car Series starts next week. It's an event at Lakeside Speedway called Shane Stewart's Heartland of America Showdown, presented by Trackhouse Racing. Why not? Let's dial up our old buddy Shane Stewart. He joins us next here on Wing Nation. The Outlaws are headed back to the Pacific Northwest. Join us for three action-packed nights of racing August 31st, September 1st and 2nd at Skagit Speedway when the world of Outlaw NOS Energy Drink Sprint Cars return for the Sage Fruit Skagit Nationals. Kickoff for the Sage Fruit Skagit Nationals begins Wednesday, August 30th with a pre-race party, live band, Sage Fruit Apple giveaways, and more. Then catch Donnie Shots and the rest of the world of Outlaws as they take on Washington's best sprint car drivers Thursday, Friday, and Saturday nights. Details at SkagitSpeedway.com. Welcome back. It is Wing Nation presented by Sage Fruit. Let's go to the Sage Fruit Hotline. Joining us from a skid steer in the middle of America. How about that? Shane Stewart joins us. Hello, Shane. How are you? I'm I'm doing good. Uh, it's been a while since I've got I've been on your show and seen you guys. So uh, appreciate you having me on. Well, I'll tell you what. Something caught our eye here, Shane. It's an event coming up on Tuesday. It's called Shane Stewart's Heartland of America Showdown, presented by Trackhouse Racing. You're involved with Kyle Larson and Brad Sweet in launching their High Limit program this year. What made you get involved, and what did you see about the High Limits deal that wanted you to participate? Well, here's here's a, here's see this gray hair right here. I've been I've been stressing about the weather yeah. <laughs> in Kansas City. Uh, well, so uh, long story short, I, I I mentioned to Kyle and Brad that I wanted to be involved some way somehow uh, with one of their races, and obviously I don't have a, a big track, right? My tracks my tracks small, so. I got to brainstorming about where I could reach out to that I could, you know, still somewhat be close to Tulsa. And I reached out to a couple tracks and they weren't really interested. And I reached out to Tommy Estes because uh, he was still at I-70 at the time. And uh, he said, I'm not staying at I-70, but, you know, you might consider Lakeside. So Brad and I got on the phone with with Darren Bennett that, that runs Lakeside and, and we put together a deal and and um so that's kind of how the ball got rolling and then obviously it's it's a pretty hefty purse right so um i started thinking about people i could reach out to to try to help me with this venue and or with this event and um one of the guys obviously was was um was kevin rudin and the other one was justin marks and uh so i got on the phone with justin and he started throwing all these crazy ideas to me and and i'm like well why don't you just be my partner on the event i think that would be the best way to go about this so uh since then um we've been we've been trying to work hard at, at raising a little bit of money to help with the purse side of it 
we've been doing a pretty good job at that. We've got a lot of local companies that's going to step on board and, and help us, and we got some really cool things that's going to happen during during the, the during the show. And um, but now that I'm on the promoting side of it, it it is a little stressful, right? Because there's so many things that that can can hinder the program and and things that are totally out of your control. So um, fingers crossed. So far, the the weather looks great uh, leading into next Tuesday, and and hopefully that stays the stays that way uh shane just to talk about that real quick since you brought it up watching the weather as a promoter or as a race car driver which one would you rather and and how much different is it now watching the weather this way well i'd much rather watch it as a driver right because you always know that there's another race right around the corner with this i got one shot to to try to make this work we we are talking about um having a rain date um for this particular race and but fingers crossed, we don't have to worry about that. But yeah, as a promoter, um, you don't have a you don't have your your next big race is not till the following year, right? So you want to try to try to get these races in when you can. And as a driver, uh, if you rain out on Tuesday, you got a race coming up on Friday, so it's not too too stressful. But um, you know, this is obviously a, a pretty big paying purse for for any any type of dirt racing, honestly. And um, it's been a little stressful, to, to be honest. Um, obviously, you, you have to rely on on people to show up, and you got to work hard to try to get your sponsors to try to help you with the purse side of it. And that that's been one of the enjoyable things that I've uh, learned. You know, obviously, being with the sprint car teams that I was with, you know, you're always talking to people to try to help. You know, your the teams that that I drove for, and so that kind of parlayed into the to own in the racetrack, right? So I've got billboards all the way around Port City now. And, and uh, you know, I've reached out to some of those those friends that helped me at Port City to try to help me uh, with this event. And um, they've all been gracious enough to, to step on board and help too. So uh, it, it's, it's, it's the promoting side of it uh, is a little bit different than being a driver. <laughs> I am sure of that. Fifty grand to win has got everyone's attention, and I'm sure the guy writing the check it's got got your attention more than anyone else. That's for sure. You had mentioned uh, partnering up with Justin Marks in all of motorsports right now. Justin Marks, one of the most, uh, um, just one of the leading thinkers in the sport. One of the out of the box guys. Trackhouse racing, NASCAR is doing things unheard of in the sport. The importance of that relationship, your relationship, A, goes back a long way with him. And how important is that to keep that relationship and that and that business and that friendship open with Justin? I, I tell I try to tell young kids all the time, no matter, you know, no matter what happens with with a team, don't try not to sever ties. Right. Don't don't leave a team or, uh, you know, a sponsor in a bad way, because you never honestly know when that person or, or your your life may come full circle where that particular sponsor or or car owner uh, might be able to help you later on down the life. So, you know, I, I have some investments with Kevin Redeen. Uh, I drove for Kevin back in 2005, and we've remained really good friends. Um, we're getting ready to start building some storage buildings together here in, in, in Tulsa. And, you know that relationship goes back a long time a long way too and one of the things that you know when i separated with with kyle and justin i did not leave there on bad terms and Justin and i have done a couple of things together since then and and um uh you know obviously uh here it comes back around right full circle so i reached out to him about this event and you know justin like you said he as soon as i started mentioning things that i was thinking about doing uh, on the promoting side of it, man, he, his mind, he, he lives, he lives on a different planet. And, uh, I don't, I, I don't really know how that he sleeps to be honest, but, um, he started throwing out all these other crazy ideas. And, and that's when I just suggested, Hey, you know, would you be interested in just being my partner in it? And, um, but it, it's true. Like you said, I mean, you just, there's, there's relationships that you, you gain along the way. Uh, I've been really fortunate to to be able to have some of these relationships come back to help me. And um, but I tell people all the time, no matter what, don't don't sever ties. Don't leave a team in a in a in a, in a bad, awkward position because you never know when those those people could come back and help you. Here, here, Boy, that is the case. And Justin Marks is a good partner to have. That is for sure. We need to step away. Shane, hang in there. Everyone else, stick around. More with Shane Stewart in just a moment. 
The Outlaws are headed back to the Pacific Northwest. Join us for three action-packed nights of racing August 31st, September 1st and 2nd at Skagit Speedway when the world of Outlaw NOS Energy Drink Sprint Cars return for the Sage Fruit Skagit Nationals. Kickoff for the Sage Fruit Skagit Nationals begins Wednesday, August 30th with a pre-race party, live band, Sage Fruit Apple giveaways, and more. Then catch Johnny Shots and the rest of the world of Outlaws as they take on Washington's best sprint car drivers Thursday, Friday, and Saturday nights. Details at SkagitSpeedway.com. Welcome back to Wing Nation, presented by Sage Fruit. Ashley Stremme and Steve Post talking to Shane Stewart on a skid steer. I'm assuming you're at Port City Raceway, Shane. Micro racing, your racetrack there in Tulsa. Um, how are things going as a track operator now in the in in the heartland of America? It's going good. Yeah, we, you know, we're we're really fortunate uh, here in the Oklahoma region to have so many micros. We average. Uh, between 130 to 150 uh, micros every Saturday. So, um, you know, the as I kind of iterated earlier, um, the promoting side of it's been it's been a progress, right? Like it's something that you don't really think about doing uh, as a driver, and, and then when it presents itself, you think, man, it can't be that hard, but it's tough. It's, there's a lot to it. There's a lot to uh, maintaining a track, especially if you want your track to be nice and well-maintained and clean. And uh, we're here pretty much every single day, uh, even for a micro track. And um, it, uh, it, it's, it's been fun. It's been a learning process. Uh, you know, since I've been here, I'm going into my third season now and we've changed a lot. We, we were sanctioned by USAC and now we're sanctioned by Power Eye. And we've moved races around and changed dates and, um, you know, trying to figure out how you make ends meet, um, you know, with the cost of everything going up. That's one of the the things that I've, we've tried to learn as a track, you know, you raise your, your back gate prices and your, and it hurts your customers that are, you know, just getting through the week just to come race. And then you raise your front gate prices, uh, it makes your spectators mad. So you're, you're always constantly battling, um, things like that, that, uh, that we're, we're trying to learn that process of it. And, but it's been a fun process. Um, like you said, I'm on a skid steer now. And if anything else comes out of all this, I can, I can run a lot of machinery and, uh, before I couldn't. So I've enjoyed the track side of it. I enjoy getting on the grader and, and concentrating on that and not really focusing on my phone. Um, so it, it's been fun. It's, it's been a learning process, but it's been fun. Shane, always, uh, you and Jen have always been inseparable. You always do everything together. It's absolutely awesome to see. But when I'm scrolling Twitter and I see Jen on the track with a fire hose, water in the <laughs> truck, taking this relationship to a whole new level. <laughs> it's like having your family involved. And is Nixon, does she, is she ready to climb behind one of these micros yet? Well, so yeah, I, I am fortunate. Um, you know, so, so Nick, or so we've, we've offered Nixon a ride. Like, so my, both of my nephews race here on a weekly basis, uh, in our junior sprint class. And, um, so I have my whole family here, which is actually really nice. My brother runs a non-wing micro, uh, here on a weekly basis. And of course my mom and dad's involved with them. And, um, we've offered Nixon, you know, Nixon's, uh, her thing is gymnastics. She's not really interested in the, in the racing side of it, which I'm fine with because, I've got little Lane uh, coming up in the wings uh, of Nixon, and and I think we're all in trouble with him. So uh, I'm probably more than likely going to be buying a, a race car of some sort for him. But I am really fortunate to to be able to have my family involved uh, with me here. You know, Jen, she's she's my brakes because if she she wasn't around, I would probably spend every ounce of money that I make here on something, right? Whether it's equipment or you know, redoing this or that, or making my road nicer or parking lot nicer. So uh, Jen does all the books and, and she's the one that tells me I need to pump my brakes every once in a while. But um, definitely, uh, you know, it's been a learning process for her too. And uh, she's, there's been a few nights that we've, we've driven left the parking lot and she's like, what in the heck did you do buying this racetrack? <laughs> because it can be pretty stressful at times, but um, we enjoy it. And, you know, I am fortunate to to be able to have my family here, and and um, yeah, like you said, we we try to do everything together, and uh, sometimes that's good, and sometimes that's bad. But uh, she's a she's a she's a trooper. 
the lifestyle change always always is interesting, and we've talked to Paul McMahon about this. We've talked to Joey about it. We've talked to Darren and Mandy about it both as as well. Um, what was that transition like from 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 motor coach Shane and Jen and Nixon to to home and school life and those types of things? What's that transition been like from a from a from a family dynamic standpoint? Well, for me, believe it or not, it wasn't hard. Uh, who it was hard on was was Jen and Nixon. Uh, and honestly, I didn't, you know, I, I raced with Bernie uh, a couple years back, and I honestly didn't even think about Nixon and Jen missing it as much as they do uh, until the phone rings and, and somebody offers me a ride and and I turn it down because I just don't have time and I don't. My my mind's not there like it was once before, and and when I turn it down, they're more heartbroken than than anything. So, um, you know, so Nixon Nixon is two feet deep into gymnastics, and uh, she pretty much lives at the gym. And so now we've started doing homeschool. Uh, so Jen is busy doing homeschool with Nixon, and but here's the thing: I, I'm going to be racing with Lane. I'm I'm pretty sure. So their life on the road is probably not completely <laughs> over with. Um, it's just going to be cheering for somebody else, not Daddy. But um, yeah, I, honestly, guys, I don't really miss racing. I don't, I I don't go home and watch an outlaw race on TV and think, man, I wish I was there. So the timing was really right for me to to get out of it. I could. They weren't with me all the time. And I probably hated that the most. Um, you know, Nixon was obviously starting school and um, our life, I could just see it starting to transition in, into a different path. And, you know, we were fortunate that that poor city even came up for sale. And, uh, you know, she's a little bit further away from her parents, but we're closer to mine. And and to watch my kids grow up with my cousin or with their cousins and, mm. and be around my mom and dad and, and my brother and all that a lot more. Um, that part of it's been enjoyable to watch. This Tuesday night, Shane Stewart's Heartland of America Showdown, presented by Trackhouse Racing, $50,000 to win for the High Limit Sprint Car Series. Shane, we appreciate the time, and uh, we wish you well next week. We're going to be watching, and I uh, hope you have a full grandstand, a big night of racing, and uh, come out of there with uh, come out of there with Jen not asking, why did you do that? That's what we're hoping for. So. <laughs> <laughs> yes, amen to that. Just pray for good weather, would you guys, please? I need that. We'll do that. But uh, no, man. I uh, I really appreciate you guys having me on the show. Obviously, I, I think Kyle was supposed to be on here and, and, and on you know the behalf of of High Limit Series, but uh, very very thankful for the opportunity uh, that they've given me, and and thankful for all my partners and and friendships along the way, and and uh, hopefully we do have a great show on Tuesday. I'm looking forward to it. It looks like the car count's going to be through the roof, yeah. And um, hopefully everybody shows up and enjoys the show. I'm sure they will. Shane Stewart joining us here on our Sage Fruit Hotline. Stay with us, more Wing Nation in just a moment. The Outlaws are headed back to the Pacific Northwest. Join us for three action-packed nights of racing August 31st, September 1st and 2nd at Skagit Speedway when the world of Outlaw NOS Energy Drink Sprint Cars return for the Sage Fruit Skagit Nationals. Kickoff for the Sage Fruit Skagit Nationals begins Wednesday, August 30th with a pre-race party, live band, Sage Fruit Apple giveaways, and more. Then catch Johnny Shots and the rest of the world of Outlaws as they take on Washington's best sprint car drivers Thursday, Friday, and Saturday nights. Details at SkagitSpeedway.com. Welcome back. It is Wing Nation presented by Sage Fruit. Ashley Stremme and Steve Post here. Ashley, it's always good to catch up with old friends and Shane Stewart. Man, it's good to see him. Good to see you staying busy, and it's going to be exciting to see what happens next week with his uh, endeavor with the High Limit Sprint Car Series. I was surprised to hear Shane say that it wasn't hard for him to step away. Um, that's not something you typically hear a racer say, but uh, I'm not surprised that Jen and Nixon had, a, had an issue stepping away. Uh, they're competitive people, love it, love that family, yeah. just good salt of the earth people if i'm not mistaken i think it's the same dynamic in the Pittman household with darren Pittman. he's pretty good but mandy and the girls are still kind of missing the racing thing shane referenced and i, I need to clean something up there shane referenced uh, kyle larson not making it with us we originally had kyle larson planned kyle went out and won that cup race life got upside down busy kyle is always so great with us we couldn't make the schedules work out and so we'll catch up with kyle larson a little bit later on but man we're glad we caught up with Shane Stewart. All right, I want to go back to the top of the show. You talked about going over to the Speed Palace, okay, over to Port Royal Speedway. 
Lucas Wolf picked up the win. It was a late race pass of Danny Dietrich. I know Ashley had been a little bit of a struggle for Lucas. I didn't realize how bad of a struggle it had been for him. It was good to see his smiling face in victory lane. Yeah, literally April two years ago at Williams Grove Speedway was his last win. Um, like you said, they've had some struggles. He's had some issues. I know they've swapped some things around and and hopefully, fingers crossed, this is the the sight of seeing Lucas a lot again this year. Um, it's a name that you know so well. His dad, um, second generation Lucas is his dad, Randy, um, incredible racer and mechanic. And so I'm I'm sure they they're working on things and and trying to get this year turned around in the best direction. Yeah, Lucas had uh, had success, won the World of Outlaw race years ago, was a Pennsylvania Speed Week champion in that famed Zemco car and. Boy, I'll tell you what, it was good to see him. And uh, whale of a race. Did, would you say you got there for the end of it? So you got got to see you the know, last couple of laps. He put on a show, it sounds like. Yeah, it was actually very interesting there at the end. Um, definitely uh, figured Danny had it in the bag. And actually, uh, his name escapes me right at the moment. Thought he was going to pick up his first win there. Schultz. Schultz. Yeah, yeah. Schultz, yeah. Um, And ended up uh, having an issue there at the very end. So I literally just caught the tail end of it, but uh, cool. it was a beautiful day yeah. out. Wheeled it in there inside of Danny Dietrich and picked up the win, did Lucas Wolf. So neat stuff for sure. We talked, our topic for this year has been March showers. Okay, we've talked about terrible, terrible weather. Okay, maybe we've got into April, maybe we're good. I hope so because there is a lot going on, Ashley, including the All-Stars kicking off their point season this weekend. No better place than Attica for this. It'll be a fun year to see what happens with these All-Stars. Yes, Friday and Sataka, Saturday at Attica. Um, obviously, the two-time and defending uh, winner, Tyler Courtney. Um, it's incredible to see what he's done just hitting the circuit and winning two championships back to back. Um, huge, huge milestone. And to see if he can do a three peat would be absolutely incredible, Steve. Yeah, it really will be. While they're doing that, the World of Outlaws, they move over into the middle part of the country over in the Midwest. Friday night, the U.S. 36 Raceway in Missouri. Saturday night, the Jason Johnson Classic, another $20,000 to win race, 81 Speedway in Wichita, Kansas. And Ashley, I'm still, every once in a while, I see the name Jason Johnson, and I realize we're not looking at results. Uh, Jason was a great ASCS national champion multiple years, and we lost him in a crash up in, uh, up in Wisconsin. Um, still kind of striking when we see Jason Johnson classic or memorial races for one of the greats we had in the sport. I'm glad we do keep honoring our legends like Jason Johnson with events like this. It's true, you know, we can't forget where we came from or who helped us pave the way, you know, guys like him, Greg Hodnett are just two that yeah. come to mind right off the get-go, and, you know, it's a shame we lost them, but it's a shame that we can keep their memory strong. Yeah, no doubt about it, that's for sure, and hopefully, fingers crossed, out on the West Coast, our buddy Dominic Selzy and everyone can go racing, yes, exactly. Uh, King of the West, they're going to try it again, the $10,000 to win Anthony Simone Classic at King Speedway in Hanford, so fingers crossed. They get their racing in. So out in California, April's going to be a good month for sprint car racing. That's for sure. And again, that high limits race next week, Shane Stewart's Heartland of America Showdown presented by Track House Racing. We do appreciate Shane Stewart for joining us here on the program. Oh, we got a little bit more time. Okay, a little bit more time. I heard us on the countdown. It is going to be exciting. We've talked so much about uh, all of the uh, high limit stuff and is going to be fascinating to see how that plays out this year. Thanks again to Shane Stewart for joining us, but more important than all of that, thank you for joining us here today on the show.